Hello and welcome to the MetPlus training for installing MetPlus. If you'd like to learn more about the MetPlus software, please refer to dtcenter.org. Please note that this content was developed for MetPlus version 3.1. My name is Julie Prostopnik and I am a software engineer working on the development and support of the MetPlus components. In this video, we will step through the process of installing the Model Evaluation Tools Plus or MetPlus verification package. This is the website for MetPlus. The information we need is on the download page, so we will go to that page now by clicking on the download link on the right side of the page. Detailed information about the software installation can be found in Chapter 2 of the MetPlus User's Guide. Just as with the Met software, MetPlus also has a few dependencies, so let's take a look at the dependencies for MetPlus in the prerequisites section of Chapter 2 of the MetPlus User's Guide. Python 3.6.3 or higher, the date util Python package, and the MET software version 9.0 or above are all required for running MetPlus wrappers. Some of the wrappers have additional dependencies to run. For example, the TCMPR plotter requires R version 3.2.5. The series by Lee wrapper requires the NCO software package. The make plots wrapper requires the Cartopy and Pandas Python packages and the Cyclone pl Plotter wrapper requires the Cartopy and Matplotlib packages. Now that we've gone over the dependencies, we can go back to the MetPlus download page to get the link to the latest release. On the download page, we can find the latest version of MetPlus under Recommended. We'll click on MetPlus 3.1, and that will take us to the Releases section of the MetPlus GitHub repository. Now we'll scroll down to the Assets section, to get the source code. We'll right click on source code parentheses tar gz and select copy link address. Going to the terminal window, I'm currently in the location I chose to install MetPlus. Please choose a location to install MetPlus, change directories to go into that installation directory, and then type wget space and then the link that we just copied and hit enter. Now we can unpack the file we downloaded by running the command tar cxf and then the name of the tar package. In this case, it's v3.1.tar.gz. We can see that the package unpacked into a directory metplus-3.1. There are some other files here, which I will tell you about later. Uh, we can now go ahead and uh, remove that tar file, just like that. And we can go into the MetPlus 3.1 directory. You'll also need to decide on a location to put some sample data so that you can run a test case to ensure that everything is set up correctly. If you're installing MetPlus for many users, you may want to download all of the sample data so that users can run a variety of cases. We have a location picked out for this example, and we'll modify the com configuration parameters to point to the sample data and to the installation of the MET tools. So let's go into the parm slash metplus underscore config subdirectory. Okay. So now we want to modify two files. First, we'll open the metplus underscore system.conf file for editing. Okay. And now we want to change the value of met installer. So let's find met installer. Oops, I uh, did not mean to do that. Let's try that again. Here we go. So you can see right now it's just got a placeholder, it's set to path slash path slash two. And it's here that we want to put the location of the MET installation that we want to use. In this case, we'll use the MET version 9.1 installation on this machine, and we will list the full path to the top level installation directory. So that is contrib slash MET slash 9.1. Now we'll save that file and exit out of there. And you can see if I list contrib met 9.1 that there's a bin directory for the executables and a share directory and so we know that we're pointing to the right location 
And so now we want to open up the metplusdata.conf file. And we want to change the value of input base to point to the location of the sample data. And we'll use the full path of the sample data. So let's get to input base. And we can see again, it's just a placeholder for path two. So I have uh, another window open here with the location of the sample data. And I will just copy that and go back to my other window. And I will paste that value right in there. So that is the location where our sample data lives. We'll go ahead and save that and exit out of there as well. For this example, we will run a case using the data from the Met Tool Wrapper sample data set. So we need to grab the applicable data set. We will go back to our browser. And here we are on the GitHub releases section. And we are still in the assets section. And now we're going to right click on sample data Met Tool Wrapper. And we'll copy the link address again. And then we'll go back to our terminal window. And this is where we would type wget space and then paste the link in that we copied and hit enter. But as you can see, I did this just before this video so that we wouldn't have to spend time waiting for the data to download. But you could unpack the file in the same manner we did before. And I'll show you that in the sample data directory, um, the sample data is here. It's in a directory called mettest. So now that we have installed netplus, configured it for the location of the MET tools and for the sample data, and have gotten the sample data, we are ready to run a test case to ensure proper installation. So we will go back to the MET Plus user's guide. And this time we are going to go to section five, the MET Plus use cases, and we'll select 5.1 MET tools. And from there we will select um, 5.1.8 grid stat. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and select the grid stat basic use case. And we will scroll down to the running met plus section. There's lots of helpful information here. But right now we are going to run a, a simple test case just to see if our installation uh, is successful and if we can run a um, a simple test case. So this section in the documentation notes that uh, you can run this use case in two ways. And we are going to go ahead and run the first way by passing in gridstat.conf and then a user specific system configuration file. So first we need to create that user specific system configuration file. And I did this ahead of time, but I'll go over its contents with you. So let's go back to our terminal window and make sure we're in the right directory, and we are. Okay, and so in this case, the file is called hera.jpresto.video.conf, where hera is the name of the machine I'm using, jpresto is my username, video is because this file is specifically for this video, and .conf is because this is a configuration file. So let's take a look at the file. You can see there's not much in here. Um, we have bracket dir bracket, and this is a necessary section header that lets MetPlus know what type of values we will be setting. In this case, uh, we're only going to have one directory, so dir is the only section header that we'll use. We added, um, or excuse me, I added a value for output base. And so you can see the full path, and this specifies where I want my output to go. Output base is set to slash path slash two, and the MetPlus system configuration file that we modified earlier, but MetPlus won't run without a path specified. So we need to override that value here in our user specific configuration file. Uh, you can override values set in other MetPlus configuration files by setting them in your user specific configuration file and passing that file last on the command line as we will do here. So now we are ready to run our use case. So we will go back to the web browser and you can see that uh, there's an example command line call here. So we wanna copy that 
And then we'll go back to our terminal window. And we can paste that in. Now, um, we did not t set our path to include uh, the location for Master Met Plus. And we also need to change path to Met Plus here to give it the actual path to our installation. So listed on the website is an example call, but you do need to modify it for uh, your specific location on your machine. So if I run this, it's probably going to tell me that it doesn't know where Master Met Plus is. And in fact, that's the case, command is not found. So I will go ahead and provide the path to Master Met Plus so that it knows where it is. And then I also need to tell it the path to the Met Plus installation, as it indicates here by path to Met Plus. So I know that that path is right here where we installed it earlier. And then I'll need to copy the rest of the path to the use case that we're going to run, which is this gridstat.com file. And I'll take the rest of that and paste it in there. Then I also need to give it the path to my uh, user specific system configuration file that we just looked at. And so that is in the current path that we are in. And I know that that path is right here. So I will go ahead and paste that in as well. And then we need to paste in the file or tab it out in this case. So we'll do that. Now we should be ready to run the case. So I'll go ahead and run that. And we can see that it's running. And at the bottom, it says Met Plus has successfully finished running. Let's go ahead and take a look at the screen output that we got, though. So if we go back to our command line call, we can see Met Plus is starting. It tells us information about which files it's parsing and it talks about um, the values that it's putting into the log file and the values it's using for Met Plus base and PAR base and that it completed its configuration setup. So as we scroll along, we can see that it, what command it's running, it tells us, it tells us the log file. And here we can see it encountered an issue. It says that it could not open this font file and could not set the font size, excuse me, font size. Uh, but that is actually okay because it's generated a new font manager. So we can just ignore that issue that it had because it solved its own problem. And then it's running Met Plus and it tells you what init time it's running. And uh, we're gives you some additional output and we can see here that that we did get a successful test case run so in our case uh, there was an issue but not an error in creating the font file but like we said it was okay because met plus generated a new font manager and if your run goes as well as this one then congratulations on your successful installation of met plus if something went wrong please email med underscore help at ucar.edu with a description of the problem you experienced and we will be happy to provide assistance Thank you so much for watching.